Iconic images of another mode of transportation. Now, you just never forget this. 50 years ago today, man landing on the moon for the very first time, the Apollo 11 rocket launching from right here in Central Florida, changing the world as we know it. Of course, the Apollo 11 mission eventually set the United States apart from the rest of the world. And today, Kennedy Space Center is honoring the more than 400,000 people. Can you imagine who all helped to make it happen? We want to head out live to the news station's Bob Fryer. He is live inside Kennedy Space Center with more on all the fun things happening today. Hi, Bob. Yeah, an amazing three day or nine days, I should say, 50 years ago today. We're, uh, what, T minus an hour and a half from that launch 50 years ago today. Today was the day of the launch. And of course, the landing on the moon on July the 20th. And then four days after that, uh, the, the crew came back to a hero's welcome. And all around here at the uh, visitor center, you see so many references to uh, the Apollo 11 mission. I wanted to show you this because it caught my eye. Um, this is a picture from the Apollo 11 launch. And you see, it reminded me that though John F. Kennedy was the one who called for us to go to the moon, not because it was easy, but because it is hard. Lyndon Johnson was a president in between. This is an ex-president right here because the president at the time of the actual launch was Richard Nixon. Now, Richard Nixon had wanted to have dinner with the, uh, the crew, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, the night before the launch, but NASA said, no, what if you've got some kind of a cold? All of a sudden, they're taking uh, a nine-day flu all the way up to the moon. So they nixed that idea for Nixon. And we are here in the Rocket Garden here at uh, the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex. If you ever get a chance to come on out, um, you really should because it's an amazing trek through history. We've been talking about the standing on the shoulders of giants, and that's how we move forward from the Mercury program, the Mercury 7, John Glenn uh, orbiting the Earth, and Alan Shepard, of course, being the first American in space. And then this right here, the Gemini program for uh, Ed White being the first uh, person to uh, do a, a space walk, if you will. And then that, of course, led to in the background there, you can see the Saturn V, and that is what we're talking about today, the three stages of the Saturn V that eventually did well, about 17 missions, but uh, five of them making it all the way to landing man on the moon. And by the way, those those LEMS, the lunar modules, they are still out there on the moon right now. We don't take those back with us. We blast off from those, and those remain, and they still remain on the moon uh, right now. But that also led uh, this direction. I know I'm going to be shooting into the sun, and I apologize, but you can see in the distance that led to the next generation, of course, the, the shuttle missions. And if you've ever made it out to a shuttle mission, I can tell you that the, the public, they're kept across the intracoastal, which is about 13 miles or so. But if you're covering it, you're about three miles away from the launch site. And it shakes so much, and I know some of the folks there at the at the studios would, would can attest to this, it shakes and rattles so much it can set off your car alarm. And that was from the shuttle mission, and that rocket is quite a bit smaller than actually the Saturn V. And the next era, if you will, the next uh, generation of space travel, of course, is coming up. It's an exciting time out here at Kennedy Space Center will be the Orion program. Now, the Orion program is going to use the same level of power as the Saturn V. It will be quite comparable. So in the next few years, as we're out there covering it, we got to make sure and turn off our car alarms because it's going to start rattling out here at KSC uh, in the very near future. Amy and Ryan, back to you guys.